Welcome back, my dear friendsters of the universe. This time around, we have a Halloween special for you. As I have been reading up your stories lately, I felt it was time to read up some other stories from some other folk. And these are not normal stories, not funny stories, like the usual ones I read on my channel. These are scary stories. Perfect for Halloween Eve. I'm sitting here with my coffee and maybe I can bring you some company this lonesome and dark evening. The first story I'm gonna read is by Lady Sparrow. It's called The Little Girl Who Wasn't. And if you want, you can rate these stories from 1 to 10. 1 being not scary at all, 10 being really creepy, 5 being somewhere... I don't know, I got a little bit of a goosebump, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? No one knows. Maybe you. But no one knows. Alright. You with me? I lived in a house from hell for four years, from age 11 to almost 16. There was constantly something happening. Doors flying open and shut. Voices. Footsteps. Nothing ever stayed where you put it. I was alone there a lot because my, both of my parents worked and I was constantly terrified. One of the most gut-level disturbing things was the little girl in my bathroom. Every time I walked past my bathroom door, which was constantly, since it was right outside my bedroom. I saw a little girl with blonde curled hair and a rose-colored dress. She just stood there, staring, looking like a photograph from 1905. I started keeping the door closed so I could walk past her without seeing her, but she was always there when I opened it. Once I stepped in past her, I couldn't see her anymore, but I could feel her there. She scared me, but I felt really sorry for her because she was trapped there, just like me, but probably forever. As the years went by and things in the house continued to get worse, she started seeming darker. I started feeling like she wasn't really a little girl. I knew there was something ugly in the house and I felt it was presenting this sympathetic image to me. Then I started thinking I was completely losing my mind. One day when I was 14 I had a friend from out of town come to stay with me for a week. I hadn't told her anything whatsoever about the house because I didn't think she would want to come if I did. Right after she got there we were sitting in my room and she left to go to the bathroom. A minute later, she walked back in with a puzzled look on her face and said, So there's a little girl in your bathroom. Um, I... Yeah, she hangs out in there. Blonde hair? Curls? Pink dress? Yeah. You know, that's not really a little girl. Don't you? I almost threw up. I was so relieved and terrified and excited and ready to run out of the house screaming. She wouldn't use my bathroom the rest of the week and I started using it at l as little as possible without pissing off my parents, who did not want to believe. Eventually we moved out and I could not have been happier. I distanced myself from it mentally as much as I could. Then when I was 18. I took another friend on a road trip to pack up a few things I left in the house. My parents hadn't managed to sell it and wouldn't for five more years. The minute we got on the property, my friend seemed uncomfortable. We came around a bend in the long, steep driveway. He went completely white. I could tell something was wrong, but he insisted he was okay. So we got to work. After a while, he asked to use the bathroom and I directed him to mine. Not 20 seconds after he left, he came running back in, gasping for breath, and slammed the bedroom door behind him. 
He started babbling about a little blonde girl who isn't really a little girl, and all of a sudden, he went dead still. He looked me in the eye, and solemnly said, She's not happy. With you? You left. You weren't supposed to. We threw whatever we could grab in two trips in my car. After I walked him to another bathroom and waited outside the door, and got the fuck out at top speed. Oh yeah. That was the little girl who wasn't by Lady Sparrow. I don't know what I think about this little story. It certainly picks up at the end when the second friend comes around. That's when I get the goosebumps. When he says that she's not happy with you. That just creeps me out. And now we got another little, little short story. It's called Photographic Memories from Annie Bananas. That name sort of destroys everything, doesn't it? <laughs> but anywho. Alright. Serious time. Serious face. Serious voice. Serious coffee. Oh, that's good. I grew up in New Mexico and always very into the outdoors, hiking, camping, rock climbing, etc. One summer when I was 19, I went on a four-day, three-night camping trip near my parents' house on my own. Might sound weird, but I have been to this area many times and it was quite safe. Anyway, I brought my camera and took a lot of pictures. When I came back and developed my film, there was three extra pictures that I didn't take of me sleeping one each night. None of my stuff was missing or stolen and nothing happened, but it freaked the hell out of me. I understand that one. I mean, it's really short, but that's thing with the three extra pictures from every night that she slept there that she didn't know where they were coming from. That's just too creepy. Too freaking creepy. <laughs> uh, next we have Losing Yourself in China from Nilly. So when I was barely 20 years old, I was traveling with a small group of people through China. And we were spending about two months in Quanghai province, which used to be a part of Tibet. Our destination was a specific town to teach English, but we'd been stopping often in small towns and small cities along the way. One day we arrived in a rural town, very small, nothing unusual. We spent only a couple of days there, shopping for food at markets and walking around to see the sights, although there weren't many. This was in the dead of winter, in February, and all the grass on the hills and plains around the town was dead and brown. The overall feeling was that of the normal kind of bleakness that any rural place has in the winter. At this time in my life things were going amazingly, extraordinarily well for me. And I say that because my teenagehood had been rather darkly overcast. But the overwhelmingly good luck of being able to travel with these close friends that I made this last year had more than changed my feelings and attitude towards life. It was like I was a whole new person. I was ecstatic to be in Tibet, went to sleep with a smile on my face every night. On my second day staying in this small town, I woke up feeling a little odd. Not bad, just odd. Like my normal thoughts and feelings had been turned down low, like on a dial. We all decided to go for a walk on the hills right behind the town, where there was a small summit with a pile of rocks and some prayer flags. To be honest, there was little altars like these on every hill, but it gave us something to do. 
As we hiked up the hills behind the town, I started to feel stranger and stranger. I wasn't scared, and I didn't feel angry or any strong emotion. In fact, it was like emotion was trickling out of me somehow. And I was getting blanker and blanker, emptier and emptier. My mind started feeling a little hazy and more and more I felt like I simply didn't care about anything. A small and rapidly dwindling part of myself started to panic, knew that something bad was happening, but it was like my own inner voice was slowly getting quieter and quieter. I remember we reached a little summit and I simply sank to the ground next to the pile of rocks without meaning to. I started tuning out the voices around me and fixed all my attention on the little pebbles in the dirt. I began tapping one against the other, repeatedly. Do you know the kind of horror that is opposite of feeling scared or feeling anything at all? The kind of vacuous hideousness of a fly buzzing against a closed window for hours on end in an empty room? That was what was filling my mind. It was demonic in its meaninglessness. I touched my face and I was grinning at nothing. Through all the emptiness a thought floated to the forefront of my mind. first it sounded totally reasonable, but something in me fought it and I was momentarily troubled. Right then my group started walking down from the hill and I followed. The further we walked down the more normal I felt until we left the town that afternoon I was totally freaked out. Another girl, Hannah, mentioned in an off-hand way that she felt very strange and depressed while staying there. I told her that I felt the same. When the group leader mentioned that a local had told him that the town has been plagued by a rash of young women under 25 committing suicide, Hannah and I went white. Na 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 Sorry about that. Sometimes I just can't keep my my face. Get the face back on. So how are you enjoying our special Halloween evening together now? Does it feel good? Do you feel pleasant? Do you feel like you're drowning in sorrow? Drowning in scared thoughts? Or do you feel safe? I would not know. Because I'm not you. Lodi, huh? That is logic. All right. Next one is from Aeon Flux 072. It's called What the Dog Knew. In my old apartment, my dog would on occasion look down the hallway towards the bedroom from the living room and growl for no apparent reason. Also, on occasion, when I was sleeping in the bedroom, she slept at the foot of the bed, I'd wake up with her staring intently at the door and growling. She was a big girl, 140 pounds of Great Dane, Catahoula and Slobber. So I'm there for a couple of years of this, thinking, okay, my dog has a good imagination. Wrong. One night, I woke up due to not my dog growling, but barking for all she was worth. Not at the door, she was barking straight at me. I opened my eyes and pretty much immediately there was a blur of light leaning over me very very close, certainly less than 6 inches from my face. It was not distinguishable as a person. 
It more resembled a person-sized version of a colorful nebula that you might see in a picture in a science magazine. Three-dimensional and all. I immediately got the distinct impression that this thing had been watching me sleep. For God knows how long, and how many times before. For all the clarity of that distinct feeling, I had no sense of what it wanted. Whether it was malevolent or just curious. I flipped the right fuck out, jumped backwards on the side of the bed to terrified to scream. And that blur of light receded and disappeared over the course of about three seconds. My dog was going absolutely ape. So shortly thereafter, I asked the building manager if anything ever died there. She investigated that and came back to me a couple of weeks later with a yes. A woman had died of a drug overdose in that apartment in 1995, so 12 years earlier. Shortly after having her child removed from her custody because of her addiction problems, my dog did still growl at the hallway from time to time, but I never saw it again. I moved out about a year later. I've still had encounters, but this thing was literally inches from my face, watching me sleep. Getting shivers, now just writing about it. I understand that. All of these stories I haven't read before, I haven't even read them to myself, so I'm experiencing them as much as you are. Maybe not, but almost. Almost the same. So yeah, I'm getting goosebumps now and then from this. I'm getting goosebumps. Alright, next one is There's Something on the Stairs from Snarky Chew. <laughs> Snarky Chew. If you ever are going to be a horror author, I think Snarky Chew might be the best horror author name ever. You don't believe me? I'll fuck you then. I'm just kidding, buddy. I would never fuck you. This is getting awkward. Really awkward. Anywho. Ah. So when I was a kid, I would race up to the top of the stairs as fast as I could. It was like some sort of silly game. Well, I must have been five or six at the time. I'm not sure, but I know I was very little. Somewhere along the way, a voice at the top of the stairs started to whisper to me. It would make bets with me, such as, I bet you a penny that you can't make it to the top of the stairs. I don't really think there was any certain amount of time or anything. As I said, I was very little, so I probably didn't have any counting abilities anyway. <laughs> I recall just sitting at the top of the stairs having conversations with this voice, about the bedding, of course. Eventually the voice it was like a whisper of a man's voice, not my own voice in my head, started to bet me my life. Instead of pennies, it said, I bet your life you can't make it up the stairs. As I got older it stopped. I never really thought about it at all. I never mentioned it to anyone. Until one night I was sleeping over at my brother's place. I was about 18. He was 22. And we were talking about spooky stories. Out of nowhere I brought up the voice at the top of my stairs and my brother got all quiet and weird. Before I even mentioned the betting aspect, he said, Did it make bets with you? We both looked at each other. Horrified. It was certainly freaking after the fact. A lot of bad shit went down in my family at that period of time in my life, and my mother, a heavily religious lady, said that there was a lot of evil in our lives at that time. I don't at all think that our place was haunted, by the way, it was built in the late 70s, and as I got older, I never experienced anything like that again. I don't know. That might have been the weakest story so far. Um, 
I didn't even get goosebumps. I don't know what you think. Give me a comment below about what you think about that story. All right. Next up, we have the drive-by from formerly Dick Move. Formerly Dick Move. As I said before, these author names, if you ever are going to be a horror author, pick up these names. I mean, they're incredible. They're gold. They're gold, I tell you. All right, then. I'm actually getting really... I feel the need to pee because I drink so much coffee now, but... At least, at least I can stay awake now. It's pretty late outside. It's dark, and it's only you and me. And I need to go to the toilet. Be right back. Ah, might have been the most professional thing that I've ever done, taking a piss in the middle of a production, but your needs got no, I don't know where I'm going with that, anywho, we were camping once, driving through some city, my dad was driving, my mom on the passenger seat, and I was kneeling behind them, leaning on the boot that separated the truck from the camper. It was evening, not full dark. We weren't really talking, and my mom was looking out of her window when she screams. Oh God! Oh my God! Jean, do you see it? My dad says, Yeah. I do. I'm going to slow down and let them by. He slowed, and the car on the right side passed us. I couldn't see inside, but the window was down, and the arm hanging out of the window looked to be that of someone impossibly thin. I asked my mom what she saw, and she said it was nothing. My dad backed her up. Years later, I asked them about it again. My mom said, It was a skeleton. It was no mask, because you could see through the jaws. It had a thong and eyes. It was death. My dad backed her up, but years later, after my mom was dead, recanted, saying it was a mask, because nothing could survive like that. That was weak. Really weak. A skeleton. Death. Really? Come on, buddy. Alright. Now we're getting somewhere. The Haunted Strip Club from Dinosaur Dance Party. <laughs> really? Dinosaur Dance Party. The Haunted Strip Club. Okay. If this not good, then I don't know where, where, where we're going with this. All right. Okay, guys. So I know there was an um, interesting um, headline and an interesting name from the author, but I can say that the story was way too long and way too slow for my taste. So we're just going with the next one. And this is a much shorter one. I'm sorry about that. I can link the site to where I'm actually reading the stories if you want to read it yourself later on. That's the deal? Okay. Next up, we have The Mouth of Babes from Haunted the Buffalo. When my older sister was born, my parents moved into a small house and... In that house, the laundry room was right across the kitchen table, so my sister often would be seen waving and staring and giggling while looking to the laundry room. This behavior continued for a long time, and when she finally could talk, they asked her who she was talking to. 
To this, she looked at them and said, The little boy. To this, my parents asked if he was nice, and to this, she waited a moment and then replied, Yes. After this, she seemed to grow out of it and forgot all about it, and to my parents' relief, dismissed it as an imaginary friend. They never mentioned it after that. When I was born, I exhibited the same behavior, and when I could talk, they asked me who I was talking to. To this, I replied, The little boy. They once again asked me if he was nice, and I did say the same thing as my sister. Although a little different. Yes, I replied. Although I think he's lying. That's pretty creepy, I guess. That's pretty creepy. Okay, how much more can we actually do here? I think we could do. Um, yeah, we're gonna do one more. There's actually two more, I think, but. That will have to do, and then we're going to do something else, aren't we? I mean, it's Halloween night, we gotta do something. Trick or treating or something. I don't know what you guys, your kids are into these days, and adults, who do, who do I know? Maybe you like putting on weird costumes and... Not gonna go there. Alright, not gonna go there. Alright, The Wrong Parents from Lady Stoneheart. When I was little, I used to wake in the middle of the night and go into my parents' room and sleep next to my mom. One night, when I was about five or six, I had this really, really vivid dream where I woke up scared and went into my mom's room to sleep with her. When I went in, however, there were a set of parents on the bed and a set of identical parents on the floor. Instinctively knew that in my dream that I had to wake the right parents because the wrong parents were evil. So I choose the parents on the floor. I distinctly remember thinking that the evil imposter parents were trying to trick me, so I choose the parents on the floor. When I went over to the parents on the floor, they both opened their eyes, and where their eyeballs should have been, it was just bright glowing red light. That was when I actually woke up. Being a scared kid, I of course went right into my parents' bedroom to sleep next to my mom. There was a set of parents on the bed and a set of parents on the floor. I literally pissed myself. The second set of parents was actually a pile of unfolded laundry, but I will never forget that fear that struck my little six-year-old heart at that very minute. Ah, that was pretty weak, but we're gonna end it there. Um, so. How is your Halloween evening going to end? Do you feel like going to sleep now? Or do you maybe feel like taking a look once outside the door? Maybe you should go outside. To see if there's somebody there. Do you have someone in the bathroom? Under your bed? In the closet? I don't know. I'm just asking. Maybe it's me who's there to look up on you. Maybe it's me who's there to scare you. I don't know. I'm just asking. Maybe it's a second set of parents who's standing outside your door trying to look at you with glowing red eyes. Maybe, just maybe, it's death. A skeleton standing outside your door rattling like never before. Improvising this story may have been the greatest part of this video. But don't forget, don't take this for granted, and don't look.